Это не интеракция, это не интеракция. Mm-hmm. Я понимаю, что я понял, я понял, я говорю, что я да, да, да. Я уже с этим адреном едем. Еще не хотел задать мальвин до сентра. Окей, мы начнем очень, очень быстро. Let's make copies next time, maybe. Mm-hmm. So we make, well, let's make copies next time, but... Oh, you have them? Hello, hello. Okay. Okay. So let's, uh, let's continue. Simen Zion. We started last week. We'll do a little bit of a review, and then uh, we'll go right there. Maybe finish it tonight. So Nachum started off with a very scary comment that there's a big sakana, there's a big danger in teaching Torah. One would think teaching Torah is the most beautiful thing in the world. It's obvious that a craft. Someone's getting over a shear. Whatever Torah is teaching, he has to be very crafty, very skillful, teaching appropriately. teaching to the people according to their level. That each person, when he comes into a shir, Rabbi Nachman told us, he comes with his baggage, he comes with certain various that he's done, and we discussed that midos, os, cause the various, we spoke about that last week, can't speak about it right now again in length. Midos, rose, cause of various, and then various cause midos, rose. So a person comes in to... A shear comes into learning Torah with a lot of creepos, with a lot of external shells on him. And then Nachman brought the Gemara that, that these creepos, the Gemara says, Hai ducha de kalunai. When a person's at a shear and he feels very uncomfortable, physically uncomfortable, Rashi says, but then we discussed even emotionally uncomfortable, mentally uncomfortable. You're uncomfortable with the Torah, you're uncomfortable with the, with the words that the person's saying, you're uncomfortable with the rub. When you start to feel uncomfortable, these creepos, these external shells that you have upon yourself because of your virus. <clears throat> and therefore, a, a rub who's saying over a shear has to be very careful to maneuver and not to get caught by these klipas. So when he's teaching Torah, the klipas want to be mavalbil him, want to confuse him. So he has to be very careful. But then Rabbi Nachman said another thing. Not only do the klipas want to be mavalbil us, do they want to confuse us and not allow us to be able to learn properly, but Rabbi Nachman told us that the Klipos also want to be yonik from the Torah itself. They want to get a sustenance. They want to drink from the Torah. Now, Klipos are not good things. So if they're going to drink from the Torah, it's not going to be a very good thing. So Rabbi Nachman told us that they're yoniko. How does a Klipo get yoniko? How does he sustain himself in the Torah? So Rabbi Nachman said when a, when a Rav teaches Torah, that's too high, the Mosras, the excess. When the Rebbe is teaching a Talmud on a level that's much higher than where he's holding, that's where the Klippa could come in and be yonik from. He called it Yirazei Torah, Secrets of Torah, to where a person is holding too many Madregas above him is considered Secrets of Torah, and that's a place that people have to be very careful and go. Be very, very careful. So... I wanted to discuss that for a few more minutes before we go on. Um, so like this. So when a person, let's say so you're going to a shear, you're learning. If the rov teaches you to a degree, let's say you're, you're level 10 learner. Whatever it is, you're level 10. He comes in and he teaches you something on level 13. So I think two things can happen. Number one, a person will hear these amazing new ideas, something that he's never heard before, something that's higher than he, he doesn't fully understand, but he realizes that's another level for him to grow. There's something called the makifin. Now the makifin, makifin is something that's outside a person. It's the pinimian is the makif. So a makif is the madregas that are outside of me right now. So in, in a perfect situation, 
you'd have a Talmud who wants to grow, he has a Ratzon, even he doesn't understand, but he wants to grow, he'll ask the Rebbe Kashas, he'll try his hardest to chazer over, to learn other Svarim. So when the Rebbe teaches on level 13, he's on level 10, it might be an amazing thing for this person. However, that's not always the case. But we're not going to tell us the ton of what can happen. If a person starts to get taught something that's above his pay scale, he's level 10, and the, and the Rebbe teaching on level 13, he does something called what we call Shvira Sakeu. Shvira Sakeu, broken vessels. A person's a vessel. We're all vessels. And if, a, if I get, if I, if you pour too much water into a kli, can knock the kli over, crack the kli, the water will spill everywhere, and nothing will be anything you had even before. There was water in the cup before, and even that water could get spilled out. Not just the excess will spill out. Everything can become lost. This is the danger that we're not going to talk about. The mostros, the excess. So a has to be very, very careful when he's teaching that if he's, if he's going to teach high levels to people who are not there, you be very careful what can happen. And if you're going for whatever reason a is going to teach these high levels, you have to have a lot of hagdamas. Okay, it's a chevra, and teach you something that's high tonight, don't worry. If it's not at your level, don't worry about it. Ask me questions. A lot of hagdamas. Because I was thinking like this. What are the levels? What do you say? When you teach and you're giving them a tour, you're trying to give them the levels. That's why he, the Rebbe Nachman is to be very skillful. To teach people in a way that everybody gets according to their level. It's very difficult. That's why generally we try to have similar levels. You know, when you have a class in school, you don't want to have the, the level out of kids and the level, you know, tough kids in the same class. How is a Rebbe going to handle that? So we try to, we try to put kids in the same, the same, you know, level that they're holding at. I heard a Misa once, it's, it's tied into this, that uh, of Chaim Brisker, Chaim Brisker was of the biggest uh, in and he created a whole new way of thinking and learning among this. And he had a very big Talmud, his son of Briskerov, he had, he had a Talmud of Shem Shkop, and he had a Talmud of Baruch Ber. And he would say over shirts to them, I heard this Misa, can't verify it, I wasn't there. But he was saying shirts to them, very deep, very, very deep shir. And afterwards, he said to all of them, he said to his son, no, tell me, tell me back the shir, say it over to me. So the Briskerov, his son, would say over what he heard. And Rechaim says, oh, very good, that's, that's, that's what I was saying. And then he says to Rishim Shkup, please tell me over what I heard. And Rishim Shkup would say over what he heard. Totally different than what the Briskerov heard. And Rechaim said, oh, I meant that for you. And then he said to Rebbe Baruch Ber, what did you hear? And Rebbe Baruch Ber would say over what he heard, separate from the other two, different. And Rechaim would say, oh, I meant that for you. Because each of his, he was obviously a, a Baumachanich par excellence, he knew his Talmudim were very different. All tremendous Talmudim, but all very, very different. And he was able to be so skillful, so crafty, to be able to teach in a way that each person would get what he had to get. Too, too much detail, people can get thrown off. Too little detail, you're letting people run wild. You have to know how to, to guide it in the right way. Big Bechanchem, Big Talmud Echam, Big Magid Eshir can do that. So what happens... What happens when a person's holding here, but he's being taught up here? This gap. So when a person, let's say we're talking about a midos issue. That's what I want to, I think that's an important part of this discussion. So let's say a person, he has an issue, the klipa of gaiva. There's a gaiva problem, right? Well, everybody has issues of gaiva, but some are worse than others. Right? He feels that he understands things, he feels that he gets things, he's a little bit better than other people. So now imagine this person's in Shir, and the Rebbe is teaching a Torah class, and he's holding here, and the class is up here. Okay? So there's a big gap in between. What's going to happen? What's going to happen to this person? He's a, he's, he's a, we're going to call him a bad guy. When he's being taught something above his level, what's going to happen? He's going to think, Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't get it. What's going to happen? What's the next step? What happens when a bald guy that doesn't get something? The Rebbe's wrong. Either the Rebbe's wrong, he might say things, and then who knows, Rosh and Haruka come out because he has to say fix. So the Rebbe could be wrong. He might speak Rosh and Haruka about the Rebbe, about the, about the Torah. What did you say again, Cyril? They said the Torah. So the Torah. The Torah. He might fall into Yish, 
that you can very depressed. A bad guy might become very depressed. I, I thought I was holding it. And I see that I'm not. He might mamish fall into Yish. But if he's a real bad guy, but he probably won't come to that level because... Hey, what he'll do is he'll, he'd rather speak Lashon about people and knock people over. But this is, this, is, this is a problem. Or let's say a person has... Let's say a person has a covered problem. Let's say he has a covered issue. So I'm just giving you examples. A person has a certain name in covered, likes when people respect him. So he goes to a shir and he hears that the shir is above where he's holding. So he might say, whoa, maybe I need to go learn that to get more respect. So then let's say he does go learn and he does understand, he works on himself. But what kind of learning is that? It's a clipper stick of learning. The whole learning is, is so crooked. What good is going to come out of it? Right? And you could say the same thing with Kina. This is the problem when a person, like Rabbi Nachman says, when a person comes in with his baggage, so all we did, keepers are in the classroom, and now Rebbe has to deal with all these things. It's a sakana get older, Rabbi Nachman says, a big sakana. This guy might take the Torah to guy, he might take it to cover, he might. You're taking the Torah and you're going to use it and learn it in an inappropriate way and teach it in an inappropriate way. Use it for cover, use it for gaiva. That's what Rabbi discussed. But before we go right there, is everybody, if everybody understands what I'm saying, please, uh, I guess, don't, if you have any questions, ask questions. Have any questions here? Okay. Seems like everybody, we're good right now. Okay. They can ask questions too. Nice. So one last Nakuta, and I mentioned this, I think, at the end of last week, is that I think it's, a, it's an obvious next step. If Rabbi Nachman is telling us that a Rebbe has to be very careful when he's teaching Talmudim not to teach them above where they're holding because of all the problems we just discussed. I think the next step would be, personally, is that a person has to make sure that when he's learning himself, he doesn't learn things that are too high above him. Now, again, we said before, if a person has big rutsam, a big chuka, he wants to go on a vote as Hashem, but MS, and he's learning things that are above where he's holding, might not be so bad. He'll ask a Rebbe. Right? Again, he's a person who's the MS, he has a rutsam to grow. So it's called the Makifin. It's that place above him, and he wants to grow to the next level. How does anybody grow to the next level? Granted, you shouldn't, even if you have a big rutsam, don't, don't try to jump too high. The person learns, let's say a person learns one daf a day. One daf kamar a day. Or he learns one parak and chumsh a day, whatever it is that people learn. That's what he learns every day. To try to double that, two block, two prak and chumsh, that's a big jump. And if a person can't handle that, what's going to happen? Shavir Sakeli. He's not only going to not do that extra parak, that extra daf, but he might become depressed. He, he, he thought he was holding there. That's why he tried it. But really, it was a mistake. It was way too much. He didn't ask anybody. And he made that big jump. And because then he's going to come crashing down, not just one dot, but he might actually come crashing down and stop doing everything totally. That can happen. That's the same idea with flipping out. That's the same idea with flipping out. It's like a person, the muscle I like to use is that when a person is climbing a ladder, and if he, if every step he took it built another rung, right? Right before, right before he, he, he would go on the next step, he would build the rung and then he would run. He would go to the next rung and then he would build the next step. Imagine you have a guy who took a big leap and jumped up to the top of the ladder. So now he's at the top of the ladder, he's standing up there, and he has the rung. What's going to happen if he slips? He's not going to fall down one step. There's no other steps. He jumped so fast, he's going to come crashing down. With my own eyes, I've seen it. I've seen this happen, unfortunately, many times. A person who jumped too fast, I'm not saying he was, there's different types of jumping too fast. You can jump too fast and too intense, too much, or you could jump and you, could jump and you can try to learn things that are way above. Try to learn Kabbalah before you know, you're learning you know, Kamash Rashi. When this happens and you jump to the top rung, nobody can withstand you can't jump all the time. Eventually, the person has to calm down. So when you calm down, what's going to happen? You're calming down into a step that's not there. But this person is all motivated. He's going, I'm going to learn 12 hours a day. So good. For the first day, two days, three days, for two weeks, he's learning 12 hours a day. Amazing. 
eventually a person gets to rest. So now, so now day 15, he only learns 10 hours. And now day 16, he learns 8 hours. And now he starts to think, whoa, what happened? I, I, I'm a 12-hour guy. But if I can't handle 12 hours, then, then what am I? I'm really, I'm really a big loser. And then what happens? Come crashing down. Crashing down. Kaddish Baruch Hu told Moshe Rabbeinu, Parshish Yisrael, make a boundary around Har Sinai. Don't come on the mountain. He said it once. He said it twice. And then Hashem said it again. And Moshe said, Rebun Shalom. That's what he said to him. Rebun Shalom. You already told me this. I already, I already told the people. What, what's the problem? Hashem says, no, no, no. Tell them again. Why? What was the name? Har Sinai was the most awesome, epic event ever. The Dvekis, the Ruchnius that was on that mountain, unparalleled. Every single person is going to want to go on that mountain. But Hashem says, don't come to the mountain. They're not ready. You, Moshe Rabbeinu, you can come on the mountain. You can handle it. But they think they want it. But if they will come on the mountain, they'll be totally destroyed. They'll be pouring an entire gallon of water into a little plastic cup. <laughs> Destruction. So warn them again and again because they have such a taiva. The people who have such a taiva, again, it was it's a good taiva. It's a it's it's for kedusha. You still have to be careful, even though it's for kedusha. You know, a person wants to learn as much as he can. You have to also be careful. That's why it's always good to have a good friend, a good rebbe who you can talk talk with, tell them what you're doing, get feedback. It's very important. So when a person, so not only a rebbe teaching Torah has to be very careful about the level. But when a person is learning himself, he has to just be careful. Because if he jumps too high, too much, too fast, it's going into the most rows. So those klipos that you might have, that a person might have, whether it's guy, whether it's taiva, whether it's atzvos, whatever that klipo may be, might become activated. And you are holding here, and your Torah that you're trying to learn is over here. This gap will activate klipos. And that's, that could be a troublesome thing. So the person has to be very careful. Be careful. Be careful. Okay, let's go right there. It ties into obviously you know, setting expectations for oneself. Expectations is is one of the most dangerous, un uh, what's the word? Um, underestimated dangers. I've thought about this a lot in the past some time. Expectations of oneself. But on the it's, but on the flip side, you need expectations to be able to grow. Want, you want to have a yeah. so you need to, you have to. So a person, when he expects things, he just, I have an expectation of myself. He doesn't think twice. Expectations is a big suit. You, know? you have to, you have to also analyze your expectations. Who analyzes expectations? I expect I could do that. No. Do I really expect that? Is that my guy you're talking? Is that my taiva? Is that my kin? Is that, where is that expectation coming from? A lot of times, our expectations are coming from the Klipos very often. I know, because I've, I've thought about it myself. I expect that I can do something that came from my Gaiva. That's where it came from. That's tremendously dangerous. Because most often, you will not meet those expectations. Because when Gaiva is creating an expectation, it's not real, it's fake. You cannot reach it. And then when you don't reach it, my mind thought I could. But reality is I can't. And then when I don't, again, I'm crashing down. That's that's what happens. Expectations are very dangerous. It's you have to have, again, like you said, you, know, you have to have expectations in order to grow to the next level of Makifan. But it has to be done with a lot of chachma. A lot of chachma. Expectations. Yeah. Very, expectations, it just happens so fast. I expect I'm gonna get to work on time, but I forgot that there's gonna be you know three hours of traffic. So the person starts pulling out his hair. But if I would have balanced myself and thought, why would I think that there's not going to be traffic? There's always traffic on the bus. <laughs> there's always traffic on the bus. Like, always. So then you'll you'll balance yourself out and you'll be more careful. Okay. Okay, let's go right there. Okay. It says we're not Vida. So now there's a new level. So before we were talking about the Klipos, that are bad, that are going to try to draw and sustain and suck from one's Torah. 
in a bad way. But now Rabbi says there's something more subtle. Midashi is klipadaka, says Rabbi Nachman, there's a very fine, thin klipa, hard to detect. Shesmucha lahadush, it's very close to kadush. It's a klipa, it's not a thick klipa, it's very close to the kadusha. It's a little bit of a, an external shell on the outside. Shezosa klipa daka yechol linok afil miguf hator ba'atzma, says Rabbi Nachman. This klipa is so cunning, and it's so close to Kedusha, that it actually can sustain itself and grab from the Torah itself. Meaning, a Rebbe is teaching Torah properly, according to the level of the Talmud. Nevertheless, this klipa is so good, it's so undetectable, it can even be yonic from that Torah itself. What's the Rebbe supposed to do then? The Rebbe is not supposed to teach too high. We understand. The Rebbe has to be careful. But the Rebbe is teaching appropriately. And still, Rebbe Nachman says there's a, there could be a problem. We'll explain a little bit in a minute. He says, I'll feel him in Mosros. Even if the Rebbe is not teaching Mosros excess too high, nevertheless, this clip of Atikim is evident. He teaches us the Tikim. What do you do? Kishim and Dabrim in Yeshua's Yisrael, when you speak about the salvation. Of Klai so when Hashem saves Klai so Sha'oz, when you talk about that, and there's a person in the room who has this very fine cleaver, very thin, maybe he doesn't even know, he probably doesn't. When you speak about the salvations of Klai so Barachas also that sends the cleaver running away. That's the tikkun. This this cleaver, they call cleaver's noga, if you've ever heard of such a word, Russia. Tani uses it, but it's Klippa's Noga. It's a place, comes from Yechezko. It's a place, it's a Klippa that has both and Tov. It has both. Bem says both. Now, when you have Ran Tov, the Tov can get access to places that straight Ra cannot get to. But you have a person. You have a person who means very well. Now, within him, he has. Klippus, but he means well on the outside and he thinks he means well, so he can get into that Rav's shear. The Rav says, I only want to take people who really, really want to learn. So this guy says, I really, really want to learn. A lot of the other who have the thick Klippus, nah, I don't really want to learn, I don't really care. Whatever, they run away. But this person says, no, I, I, really, I really want to come and I really want to learn. So now he gets into the shear. The problem is, he's sitting there and there's some Ram. So he's in the shear, and the Rebbe is teaching a beautiful shear. But there's, there's Ram. Now, what can happen? I'll give you one example. One example is, is that if a person has this undetectable Ra in him, so the Rebbe is teaching the Shir, and he might hear something that the Rav didn't say because he came in with prior ideas. All right, let's say, let's just say, a person, he studied very deep philosophy, not Jewish philosophy. Which I know absolutely nothing about, but let's just say. So now, but he, now he wants to change over, and he, he, he's not into this stuff anymore. He really wants to learn. He really wants to. And he comes into the shir and he starts listening to the rav, and then something that the rebbe says, he then says, "Oh, one second, I think I learned in Greek philosophy something that connects to that." He starts to make these connections when really it's totally wrong, but he thinks because it sounds like it's connecting. Oh, maybe that that. Thing I heard in Greek philosophy. Oh, maybe, maybe it's really Torah. And then he doesn't ask the Rebbe about it. He thinks he means well, and he starts and he starts himself. He's messing himself up, and he might start telling other people about it, saying, "Oh, you know what? You know what Rebbe said? He means well, but it's a clip of duck, and this could create problems." You know, this is just one example that I, that I was thinking about. Yeah, makes sense. It's, it's dangerous. The Rebbe has to teach about Yeshua's Israel. We'll have to see why that's why that's a good deacon. Um, what the Yeshua Yisrael does, and I'll explain more in one second, but what it does is that it's going to flush out any old ideas. For that, for that shear, is somehow it's, it, there's a segula base to it, which means we don't fully understand. 
But also there's some logic to it. We'll see on the next page. But when you talk about the Yeshua Yisrael, the nations of Kala Yisrael, there's a certain segula that's right now that it's able to flush out for that time being, that shear is going to flush out any old Greek philosophy or whatever it came into the shear with, and it will protect the, the Torah that the Rebbe said. So Rebbe Nachman, I believe the same. So let's just finish up the Torah, and then we'll spend a little bit more. The Zebuchin is Masham Rebbe saying, this is what our rabbis teach us, as Rebbe Nachman is quoting Gemara Zechon of Rocha, the Gemara Zvachim says, it's a big machlokas. When was it that Yisrael came to Bnei Yisrael? Did he come before Matan Torah and then leave before Matan Torah, like it seems? Or did he really come after Matan Torah? So when Nachman goes with the opinion, the Gemara says, She Yisrael ba, Yisrael came, the Halach lo kod Yisrael came, and he left before Matan Torah. That's the opinion he's going with. Ki Yisro hu bechinas haklipa hadaka shoboraz. Yisro himself, says Rabbi Nachman, was this klipa. No, Yisro is not a Russia. Chas Yisro was, he meant well. It's Moshe's father-in-law. But he's still a klipa. He had a past. He had a history. Ki shoshomaz Yeshua is Yisrael. Oh, I'm sorry. Yisrael was this Klippa that, that came but then left, was chased away. How was he chased away? When Moshe Rabbeinu was telling over the Yeshua is Yisrael, as it says in the Pesukim, Yisrael comes, the Yishma Yisrael, Yisrael hears, what Hashem did, and he came. And then the first thing Moshe does, look at the Pesukim, he starts telling Yisrael over, all of the Nisan, and you have to look at Rashi there, everything that happened, by Mitzrayim, Yamsuf, Amolek, the Mon, which I was telling all of these things again, but Yisra already knew those things, but Moshe told them again. So we could understand here that Rabbi is saying that Moshe knew that, Klippa, that the, the Yisra was this Klippa, he meant well, but he was a Klippa, and he had to take, he had to get him out of there before Mount Torah. Mount Torah, there was an Ikuv, there was a delay in Mount Torah, Hashem would not give the Torah as long as Yisra was there. Sounds not so nice. But if Yisra would have been there, he would have been Yonik from the Gufa Torah, even if HaKadosh Baruch Hu was the Rebbe. HaKadosh Baruch Hu was the Rebbe. And you can't say HaKadosh Baruch Hu was teaching inappropriately. HaKadosh Baruch Hu was the greatest Rebbe we ever had. So if HaKadosh Baruch Hu was teaching, Yisra could have been Yonik, something from that Torah, and it would have come out okay, not so right. And if Moshe then had to get him out, how did he get him out? By telling over the Yeshua Sisra. This is what Rabbi Nachman's learned. You teach him about the salvations of Kali Yisra. So, what about the others over there? No, we're not. Oh, the Arab Rabbis. They are big clippers. They are big clippers. They're, 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 it's, it's, uh, when you have a bigger clipper, you could tell a little bit more. It's the, it's the scary ones are the ones that you're not really, it's undetectable. Not that Yisra's a bad person, but what he, the damage he can do, when you have a person who means well and he looks well and he, you know, he looks like a rogue and he's telling over things that are like not really in this, that could create a lot more damage when a person starts saying crazy, uh, you know, at the courses. People are like, ah, oh, come on, come on. We know you're joking. But you have a person who looks the part, acts the part, sounds like the part, and then says things off, that can create big problems. So I saw on a Sefer that he says like this. The Pasuk says, when Yisrael heard all of the Yeshua's Yisrael, it says, Vayichad Yisrael. So some Perushim say, Rashi said he was happy. Some say he got like goosebumps. Got goosebumps. So Rashi says, and when Moshe Rabbeinu was telling over about the destruction of Mitzrayim and Yamsuf and all the Mitzrayim dying and the whole country being destroyed, the Yisro got upset. He had like goosebumps and he was upset about the destruction. Rashi brings down over there that, that I think he says by a, by a ger, that a ger is, is, he always holds on to, you know, his past. Like if, let's say you have a ger who becomes a yid, but he came from some random country, whatever it is. Omaha, 
some country Omaha. <laughs> if there would be some kind of catastrophe over there, and let's say it was Rishon, let's just say it was Rishon, he'd still be bothered. You see Rashi over there. He quotes, I don't know if it's a, it's a Medrash, it's a Chazal. It has, he'll, he'll be bothered because he still is holding on to that past. So when you speak about the Yeshua Yisrael, that Hashem saves clients and punishes enemies, that chases away this cleaver, that flushes it out. Like it flushed out by Yisrael. That's what Rabbi Nachman's teaching us over here. So when a Rebbe is teaching, so I saw brought down, when a Rebbe is teaching and he sees, you know, the guy's not so into it, some creepers here, he should Dafka start off the shear by teaching some of the Yeshua Yisrael. Take some sukkim. Talk about Yisrael Yisrael. Talk about whatever it is. And something in Nach. And that should help you masaking these, these clippers and a person, it'll open up the path. It'll chase away those clippers. Doesn't mean those kids are going to run out of the classroom. Not like Mamish Yisra who left. <clears throat> but it'll chase those clippers away and it'll allow the Rebbe to teach appropriately. Um, so someone should ask me a question now. Well, maybe I didn't say enough yet. Comes in, Yisra comes in, and he tells over to Moshe Rabbein and Moshe, "I think your your way of judging is not so right. Now you're making the people stand up all day. You're going to weigh yourself out by judging every single case. So what does Moshe Rabbeinu do? He doesn't he doesn't tell Yisra to take a hike. What does he do? This is the he asks he asks a Kodesh Baruch Hu. Yeah, it's a good idea. It's a good idea. Make the whole system, and he did." So he's just a good guy. We mean creep a daka. He just gave a beautiful, a beautiful advice. Hashem is asking to. So what are we gonna say? True, Moshe Ben explanation, which was was important because who knows if Yisro is saying if it's really honest. But Kosh Baruch Hu not. That was good. That was good. That was good. That was good. That was that was, that's what it was the good part of them. Yeah, yeah, both. There's a Rashi in Devarim. My friend, I was talking to my friend about this this piece of, the, of Rebbe Nachman, and he, and he and he reminded me I had not remembered it. There's a Rashi in the beginning of Devarim. Moshe Ben is giving rebuke to Chacha to Klal Yisrael in the beginning of Devarim, going through the Meraglim, going through the Ego, all the different issues that Klal Yisrael had. Right, this is Moshe's farewell address, giving him muster. Telling them what you guys did was wrong, but you know, Chazak Vernatz. And he says it's in Pasuk, it's in Perak Al Pasuk Gida. You can look it up. And he's going over how it was very difficult for him to deal with Kalisra. Okay, a lot of problems with so was complaining, burdening him, very difficult. So what happens says Moshe Bain? We have to make a court system, we have to make a little judge, we have to make judges, like Yisra said. He doesn't mention Israel. And then Moshe Ben says, and you all wanted me to do this. Right? So Rashi brings down over there, and says, what was the what was the Muslim? Right? You all wanted me to do this. Yeah, and, and you did set up the court of Moshe. You did exactly what the people said to do, and you did it. So what's the Muslim? So what does Rashi say? Rashi, we know, look at the Rashi over there. I don't have the Russian here. Moshe Rabbeinu was giving them people most. Uh, B'nai Yisrael, why didn't you say, why didn't you say, no Moshe, no, 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 don't make a system. We don't want to be judged by anybody else but you. You're the Rebbe. You're the Tzaddik. I only want to be judged by you. I don't want to go to some other person. So Moshe Rabbeinu was saying, you didn't say that. Now, he gives a little bit of a, a big Musa. Why didn't Moshe, why didn't you, Kala Yisrael, say it? Because you would rather have other judges who you could bribe. That's what Moshe Rabbeinu says. You knew that if I wasn't your judge, somebody else, you could probably bribe. They didn't hear this little conversation between Yisra and Moshe. It was only exclusively to that. Maybe Klai Yisrael heard that Yisra proposed this idea. Moshe asked the Shabbat and said it was a good idea. So they, that's why they didn't ask. No, no, but the people, it sounds like the people were saying, no, no, you should do it, Moshe. It's good for you. Great, great. Two thumbs up. You should do this. Moshe Rabbeinu says, that was not right. You shouldn't. Even though Kaddish Baruch was masking, people still should have said, no, 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 no. 
We won't. We don't want anybody else to call you. Like right now, if you remember, when I could have always given not Arshas Yisrael, Hashem was going to give it, and He was telling Moshe Rabbeinu, "You're going to say over the Sarsa Dibris." And Rashi brings down that Moshe Rabbeinu says to Hashem, "No, no the people said they don't want me. They want it from you." I mean, the people knew this logic. We want to go to the top. They could have. Our, they were complaining about everything. They could have <coughs> that time too. Don't, don't make courts. Just don't make courts. And why didn't they? Again, because they had this ulterior motive. So the clip here. So now, so what happens like this? I'm going to finish up in a few minutes. Yes, you meant well. Tov. They go home nice court. And at the end of the day, it, it, that's how it worked out. But where did that come from, that idea? It might have come from some past, he's, now oh, he's a gear. It might have come from where he was, where he was, that they had a court system. I mean, it didn't come from the best place, which what? Took away, what was the court system doing? It was taking away the koch of the tzaddik. It meant well, but you're taking away the koch of the tzaddik, of the tamal of Moshe Rabbeinu. So very, it's undetectable. It looked good. It looked good. But there was something a little bit crooked. Yes, Hashem is masking. Because sometimes when Hashem is also masking to the Miragul. That's a whole different suit. When people ask for things, Hashem says, okay, here you go. Listen, whatever you want. Then you sign as yours. You ask for it. So that's not really, you can't really use that as an answer. Oh, Hashem is masking, so we see that it was correct. We see Moshe Bain is giving Moshe. You sh- people should have seen through this. Why wouldn't you want to deal with the tzaddik? Of course, Moshe Rabbeinu is the honor of Nicole Aldum. He's not going to say that explicitly. But you understand. They took away the koch of the tzaddik. If the tzaddik himself wants to make a court system, because I'm telling you, that's his decision. But to create a court system that minimizes his power, that was the trick. So the Nachman says you'd be very, very, very careful with these clippers. If you're going to teach the Yeshua Sisro, Yeshua Yisrael has a, has a sagugo. We teach about the salvations of Klai so that it's, it knocks away his klipas, but also, like by Yisrael, it, it awoken him to the. By Yisrael, he got upset, right? He got upset about the destruction of Mitzrayim. So you, so it almost activated within him. You saw the klipa come out a little bit, and then you can deal with it. And Yisrael left. Yisrael left. Let's finish up. So now Rabbi Nachman says an unbelievable line. The last line here. About tzaddik a real tzaddik, a real tzaddik who knows how to teach Torah and knows this Torah, who knows the ramifications of what he's teaching. He has a tremendous fear when he teaches Torah. Who knows what, what people are going to hear and what they're going to say. He's more fearful, this tzaddik, of teaching Torah than Yom, HaKip, Yom Kippur and Rosh Yom Nerai. That's very serious. So when a person is teaching, when a person is learning, try his best to learn according to your madrega. Try to learn about the Yeshua Yisrael, learn about Hashem's salvation, the Hakar Satovi of Hashem for everything. Hopefully that'll knock away klipas. And one should speak to a Rebbe, a good friend, try to balance things. And we should be zochem into Hashem to be able to learn, to be able to teach properly. I wish you a good Shabbos. And Nishinich Nasad Demar Nisimcha. Thank you.